Hello and welcome back to the Three Pillars Podcast. I'm your host, Chase Tobin, a.k.a. Tobinator the Motivator. And this is episode 48, Christian Politics. All right, guys, thank you for coming back to the Three Pillars Podcast, the podcast where we discuss uh, how to grow in your walk with the Lord uh, using those three pillars, spiritual, mental, and physical fitness. Uh, and again, to just in- increase our life, increase the kingdom, further the kingdom, fulfill the Great Commission, uh, and just be better human beings. So uh, welcome back to the podcast. Uh, I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, Rumble, uh, or now Odyssey, we're also on Locals and uh, Cloud Hub. Man, we're all over the place. Uh, wherever you uh, view your video content, please uh, like it, share it, drop a comment. Uh, let me know how you're doing. If you want to talk about anything else, drop it in the comments. We'll get get that in, get you on a podcast, get your ideas out there, and we'll go from there. If you're listening on any of the podcast platforms, Apple, um, Spotify, Anchor, uh, Amazon Music, anything like that, uh, we're there as well. So if you liked all that stuff, please give us a rating and a review, and I'd very much appreciate that. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about Christian politics. I don't get very political in here very often, but this is something I think is very important, especially for people who want to know uh, how you navigate the waters of the world uh, as a Christian. And we'll get into that in just uh, just a few minutes. So as always, we're going to kick it off with a quick word of prayer, and then we're just going to, going to dive right in, all right? So Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for all the many blessings that you give us each and every single day. Uh, Lord, thank you for waking us up with purpose, being our guiding light, being our savior, just being uh, being love for us, Lord, loving us unconditionally no matter what is going on in our lives. Lord, I ask that you give me the words to say tonight, give the people listening the eyes to see and ears to hear that we can all grow closer to you. And Lord, let's just uh, bless everybody who's tuning in. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Christian politics. As you guys know, if you've been paying attention to the podcast, I have just finished a book called The Benedict Option. You guys should definitely check it out. Um, I got a couple excerpts I'm going to read from it that really um, kind of hone in on what we're going to be discussing tonight. And I'm just going to expound upon some of the points um, Mr. Dreher uh, discussed. Because I think it's important, especially as we are trying to grow closer to the Lord, we have to grow away from the world. Jesus says we have to uh, live in the world, but not live of the world or for the world. We live for Jesus, uh, but in order to do that, we still have to exist in this world and figure out how we're going to navigate through it. Uh, And how do we do that? We establish our own almost parallel system to what we see as absolutely detrimental and destructive to uh, society, especially in the West today. All right, so that is what we're going to get into tonight very briefly. Um, I'm just going to read a couple excerpts from this book. Again, The Benedict Option by Rob Dreher. This is on page 96. Um, I'm just going to jump right in, all right? Uh, No matter how furious and all-consuming partisan political battles are, Christians have to keep clearly before us the fact that conventional American politics cannot fix what is wrong with our society and culture. They are inadequate because in both their left-wing and right-wing forms, they operate from the position that facilitating and expanding human choice is the proper end of our politics. The left and the right just disagree on where to draw the lines. Neither party's program is fully consistent with the Christian truth. And that's true. Like, if you think that somebody from the right or somebody from the left is going to be the savior of American politics, you're wrong. All politics are local. All politics start with you and me getting involved in our communities and taking care of it the best that we can. And if not, if they're not doing what they need to do, we need to get in there and change it or start doing our own thing, still within, you know, the letter of the law, as it were, but doing something uh, like like a breakaway from the system. If you don't like what's going on in public schools, pull your kids out and homeschool them. If you don't like what's going on in public schools, go to your school board meeting and say, hey, I don't like what's going on here. Y'all need to fix it. You're seeing that all across the country right now. It's a beautiful thing. But that's not a politician in Washington. That's people like you and I getting out there and making things happen. All right. That's how you make make a change. If you want um, an even greater change, you need to teach kids about Jesus. Period. All right. Next little excerpt I want to get into. uh, It's on page 98. It's from the same chapter. Uh, Here's how to get started with the anti-political politics of the Benedict Option, as we talk about here. Secede culturally from the mainstream. Turn off the television. 
Put the smartphones away, read books, play games, make music, feast with your neighbors. It's not enough to avoid what is bad. You must also embrace what is good. Start a church or a group within your church. Open a classical Christian school or join and strengthen one that exists. Plant a garden and participate in local farmer's market. Teach kids how to play music and start a band. Join the volunteer fire department. The point is not that we should stop voting or being active in conventional politics. The point is that we break away and get back to what is really normal, what is really the heart of our essence and our being as uh, as Christians, as we walk this this path that, he's, that God has set before us. <clears throat> if you're so buried in your phone and TV all day long, you're not looking out at the world and seeing what's going on. I saw a really funny meme the other day. Now, you know, I do a lot of social media stuff, but I, I, I try to limit that so I can actually take a step back and look at what's going on and the beauty of the world. <laughs> but this meme had these two guys that were just like, oh my God, it said people with the inter internet, it's like, oh, the world's ending. Did you see what so-and-so said about blah, 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 connecting all these dots and this, that, and the other? We're all just, ah. And then there was two guys uh, at the bottom of the meme. There were uh, these two bearded guys looking at each other and they were out over like a pond looking at a sunset or something like, man, isn't God's work beautiful? And the guy was like, yeah, that's awesome. And the caption at the bottom was people without the internet. So you know, it really makes you, makes you think you got to take a step back and really look at all the beauty that is around us right now. There's a lot of crud going on in the world, but is the crud going on in the world because you're doing nothing but watching the, the, the sludge coming out of the TV? You're spending all day on your phone, scrolling through, you know, what, whatever you don't, you miss the big picture. We got to get back to that. Uh, foster creativity by, by reading more. Um, even if it's like an audio book, like I, this past couple weeks, I've been slaying it with some audio books. I got through like five in like, you know, two days. <laughs> they were like, you know, hour long, you know, things, things each. Um, and I was on a long road trip, but you know what I mean? At least it was something that I felt was edifying. Some of the stuff I was listening to. Um, we're teaching my daughter how to play piano right now because she can kind of play by ear like I, I used to when I was in a band. And she's doing very, very well with it. Foster that creativity with little boys. Let them create things with blocks and then let them destroy it because <laughs> that's what little boys do, right? Um, establish your sense of community. Establish your community in your neighborhood. Make sure you're inviting people over and having them over for uh, for meals, you know, you know, once a week or once a month or have them at your house one, one week and you go to theirs another week and really be there for your immediate community. Uh, get involved in your church, not just showing up on a pew. Um, try to make it to some of the studies. I was invited to one uh, last Sunday, a men's study that just got started. I'm going to try to get into that uh, as best as I can. Um, we have, you know, kind of an interesting schedule on Sunday on Sundays, but uh, I think that'd be very beneficial to, you know, do my service and then go hit uh, the men's study right after that. And we're going to figure out how that works out. Uh, if not, I'll try to maybe start one from the house. You know, there's a lot of things you can do um, to really break away from the mainstream. Um, plant a garden, right? If you're not gardening right now, you really need to just start doing it because it, A, it reconnects you with nature. Yeah, you know, my wife and I, have, we have a little garden plot we started every year. Um, we've had a lot of fun with it. Um, it also provides you food. <laughs> Goodness, if everybody had a garden and like 12 chickens, you could get rid of food scarcity uh, globally instead of having everybody depend on the government. And that's part of it too, is breaking away, being more sustainable. The more you do for yourself, the more you do on your own, the less you have to rely on the government and the less control they have over you. I'm not saying that government doesn't have a purpose, but the way we've let it get to now is a bunch of self-serving people who are definitely not serving the Lord, not all of them. And I'm going to do a whole other podcast on, on the Libertarian Party. I'm going to get there another time too. I don't, again, I don't want to make this a political podcast, but there's some ideologies out there that we really need to address and how to, and how to again, navigate through some of these people who have different ideologies and how to uh, talk to them, check them and see uh, if you can uh, chisel out and break, break some of these people of 
um, some of these ruts that they, that they get in, how to break them out of it, and really see kind of the error of their own ways. Um, you know, again, not beating people over the head with a Bible, but say, hey, if you really think about this, you want to change some things for the good, you got to throw in the little Jesus. It's that simple. Uh, last thing, it's the last sentence of this, uh, this chapter four. Uh, Ceasing to believe that the fate of the American empire is in our hands frees us to put them to work for the kingdom of God in our own little shires. You know, my kids, we watched uh, Lord of the Rings. At some point, I'll be reading it to them when they get a little bit older. Um, you know, we've started reading some of the Narnia books, and so I think those are a little easier for them to wrap their heads around. Um, everybody wants this little, whether you, whether you want to admit it or not, everybody wants their own little shire house. Everybody would love a little hobbit hole with the grass over the top and little gardens and, and things like that. Everybody wants that. And if we would all kind of take time to kind of hone our own little bag end, as it were, everybody, and you can influence your, your whole neighborhood. If you, imagine if your entire neighborhood uh, had a garden plot. Hey, you guys, you guys are growing tomatoes. You guys are growing cucumbers. We're growing potatoes. You guys are growing corn. Like, and that's all that they had to tend to. And next thing you know, you, you have a boon and a feast for everybody, right? If everybody kind of took care of one another like that in the smallest element, that spreads out throughout the whole neighborhood, throughout the whole zip code, city, county, state, nation. It, it would create a ripple effect. But we, that, that requires us breaking people away from this matrix that's getting plugged in right so we need to we need to break free of that and that's what i really encourage each and every single one of you guys to do is to take some of the things we talked about uh tonight to heart and really figure out how you want to break away. if you don't want to break away that you know that's fine too i guess uh, but i would encourage you not to because what is your what is your purpose otherwise to just simply exist and not uh, and just consume constantly and never produce or create. That's kind of what we're called to do is to produce, create, uh, to produce uh, art, to produce food, to produce wonderful human beings, to produce uh, wonderful king, uh, followers of the kingdom of the Lord. But not just to consume all day long. Consuming news, consuming food, consuming all these other things, all the sludge that we talk about in the world. We don't want to do that. We want to be more producers. But we also, you know, some of these other things, I guess to, in the, to address the physical side of the house, we also want to produce, you know, a strong being, a strong presence, a strong, you know, when somebody sees you, like, man, that guy carries himself with a lot of confidence. And how, how, does he, how does he do that? Is it just because he's in the gym all the time? No, it's because he's got the Lord at his back. No weapon form shall prosper. All that stuff gets comes into play. Um, but that's that, that's where I, I want you guys to be. That's where the takeaway I want is, is to let you guys know that you can break away. It's okay to break away and, and, and take care of your own little shire and establish your own little shire and get away from this right-left uh uni party that we've created in the country get involved as much as you can on your local level and that'll affect the national level the ultimate goal is to shrink it down to its original form <laughs> and let us do our own thing all right um but we'll get there but we can't get there without jesus it's that simple got to have him in our lives so Christian politics without getting too political, right? That's what I, that was the whole goal of uh, this little chat. Um, again, I, I don't like to keep these things too terribly long for you all. I appreciate you all tuning in very much. Um, but that's how we're going to be better as uh, warriors for Christ in this crazy postmodern, post almost post Christian world. Because there's a lot of there's a lot less of us, at least in this neck of the woods, than you would think, especially in the younger generations. We have to raise them to be mighty warriors for the Lord. And that's my goal. That's what I'm going to do for you guys. Um, God wills it. So let's end this with a quick word of prayer. Get you guys cut out for the weekend. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, please, again, if you like what's going on here, share it. Um, share it to the winds. 
and whatever platform that you, you're on, whether it's video or on the audio, uh, I thank you very much for, for all of your feedback and your comments, uh, your love and support. So thank you all very much. A um, little quick word of prayer and we'll get out of here. Heavenly Father, thank you for, again, giving us the tools to navigate this world, for being our guiding light. Lord, thank you for really showing us what it means to see your beauty and break away from this world. Thank you for creating this world and all the things in it. Thank you for showing us how to live in it, navigate in it, but still live for you and bring as many people to you as we possibly can. Lord, I ask that you just uh, bless anybody tuning in tonight, uh, anybody who tunes into this podcast, uh, bless them abundantly, give them the tools and the skills they need to break away and just grow closer to you each and every day. Lord, I ask that you continue to guide us and direct us, strengthen our faith, strengthen our minds, bodies, and souls uh, so we can be those mighty warriors for you. Lord, I ask all this in your holy name. Amen. That's all I got for tonight, guys. I appreciate you all tuning in. Again, this is the Three Pillars Podcast. We'll check you guys next week. Tobinator, out.